and the maximum value of this box. This is the function, remember, that describes the volume of the box. We've got to differentiate this. The rules of differential calculus allow us to differentiate separate terms one at a time. So the first thing I've got to do is expand out these brackets to get a series of separate terms that I can then differentiate. So a little bit of algebra before we can start using the calculus. And that, invariably, is the difficult thing. What's difficult about differential calculus? Nothing. But what's difficult about the problems? The algebra. So it always comes back to the algebra. So I can't overemphasize the importance of knowing how to factorize, knowing how to expand, simplify, all those things we're looking at. Okay? Expand out this bracket. Right, I'm going to ignore that one to start off with because I can only do two at a time. I've only got a small brain. I'm going to multiply x by each of the things inside this bracket. So, I'm going to create another bracket, and inside that bracket is going to go x times that term, and then x times that term. Would you like to try and fill that in? 12 minus 2x squared. So we've now got two brackets I've got to multiply by together. Multiply together now. And remember, in this case, if I've got one bracket multiplied by another, I've got to take each term in here and multiply that by each term in here. So I this is the way I would do it. There are other ways. But whichever way you do it, be logical and don't skip about where you make mistakes. I'll take 20, multiply by that and then 20 multiplied by that, not forgetting the negative, minus 2x then times that, and minus 2x times that. Oh, I've got a minus times a minus, so that's going to give me positive. So expand out the brackets, what do I get? So, 20 times 12x, 240x. 20 times minus 2x squared is minus 40x squared. Right, Jack? Minus 2x times 12x squared is minus 24x squared. Minus 2x times minus 2x squared is plus 4x cubed. So we call it that. Can I do anything with that now to simplify it? What, Jack? Right, well done, exactly right. They're both the same, x squared, so I can collect them together. Minus 40, lots of x squared. Minus another 24, lots of x squared is, Jack? Uh, no, no, uh, I can see where you get that, but no, that's not right. It's minus 40, minus another 24 is minus 64. Not, okay? That's where you got the 16 from, I see now. 240x minus 64x squared plus 4x cubed. Right, so I can collect like terms. We talked about this in algebra. Expanding, collecting like terms, factorising these words, okay? And that is the volume. So the volume can be written like this, or volume can be written like this, or it can be written like this. They are the same thing, it's just written in a different way. But if I want to differentiate it, it needs to be written like this to do it. Because now I've got three separate terms, and I can differentiate each term in turn. Okay, And the rules are dead simple. We're going to go through those in a while, but just for now, let me just do it for you and show you how simple it is. The first thing, remember the differential function is a new function, so it's not volume anymore, it's a new function which tells us what? What does it tell us? The rate of change, yes, and that's what this means. This is the notation for it. The rate of change of v with respect to x, and in shorthand we say dv by dx, d for differential, the differential of v with respect to x. The rate of change of v with respect to x equals, here's the answer, 
340 minus 128, little bit of mental arithmetic there, plus 12x squared. And those of you who know the rules will know that it's as simple as that. You just write down the answer. The calculus bit is not the difficult bit. The algebra leading up to it is. We've got a new function now. George, got a new function now. which tells us what? No, don't look at the rate of change of with respect to yeah, okay but that's not what I want, is it? I want to, well, I have to remember the maximum value so what have I got to do next? Look at the curve what's special at the maximum value? What's zero? The rate of change or the gradient is zero. So what do I do next, George? Yeah, but how to do that? What's this going to be? At the maximum value, what is this? What's the rate of change? No, you said it a minute ago. The gradient... Remember, this tells us the gradient or the rate of change. What's the gradient at the maximum value? Zero. So I'm after when this is? Zero. Right. Okay. So I say at maximum value. Okay. dv by dx, the rate of change of v with respect to x is zero. So, I've got this, 12x squared, I'm going to write it in order of power, which is normal, minus 128x plus 240 equals 0. <coughs> so, all I've got to do now is solve this, and I've got x. Okay? We've looked at quadratic equations, and if you remember back, quadratic equations always have how many solutions? Two. Right. Look at the curve. There's two places where the gradient zero. One, two. So it's going to give me both of these because mathematics doesn't differentiate, huh, it's a pun, okay, between the two. It get, tells you both. It's up to us to then decide which is the one we're after. So we're going to have to worry about that at some point, okay? But for now, let's just do the thing. So, I'm going to solve this thing. It's a quadratic equation. Before I solve it, though, I'm going to try and make life a bit easier for myself. I'm going to look for a number that goes into 12, 128, and 240. Anybody know? I know, because I've done it before. Fours go into all of them. I'm going to divide that by four because fours goes into twelve. So that means I've got to divide that by four and that by four and that before. If I divide something by four, I can divide everything by four. Zero divided by four is zero. And so on. So what's twelve divided by four? What's 128 divided by four? 32, and that was without a calculator. What's 240 divided by 4? Equals 0. Makes it just a little bit easier to solve. If you look for a common factor, it makes life a bit easier for yourself. Now what I'm going to do, of course, is plug these numbers into the quadratic formula, which I'm not expecting you to remember. Some will. I do because I've used it. I was using this equation before you were born. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. Minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a t all over 2a. Okay. 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 
Remember, of course, using this formula, a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x, so that's minus 32, don't forget the minus sign, and c is 60. <coughs> so all I've got to do is plug these numbers into the formula and then put, put it into a calculator and away we go. The plus minus is a bit of a problem. I can't put plus minus into a calculator at the same time. So what I do is I put the plus in first and then I hold it on the calculator and then change the plus to a minus. So I'm going to use the fraction button at some point and then put that on top and this underneath. Okay. But before I do that, let's just have a look. Let's try and simplify it a bit first. So x equals minus whatever b is, which is minus 32. And this is not bad practice, actually, to avoid errors. Minus 32 squared minus 4 times a, which is 3, isn't it? Times c, which is 60, all over 2 times 3. I just, I don't think, I just substitute the numbers for the letters and use brackets. I don't worry about trying to sort the signs out or anything like that. Just bang in the numbers and then worry about the signs afterwards. It leads to less errors because the minuses and double minuses and pluses and things are all in there. So be careful when you substitute these numbers in. If you're going to make a mistake, that's likely to be where you make the mistake. So then I'm going to try and simplify a bit. Minus minus 32 is plus 32. So this becomes just 32. Plus or minus the square root of. Just note this. We've talked about this before, but I can, can't repeat it too many times. So just stop writing for a second look. If I put into the calculator minus 32 and then hit the square button, it doesn't tell me the right answer. It gives minus whatever that number is, which can cause errors. We've come across this before. So at this point, ignore the negative sign, because when you square a number, it's always going to be positive. So just put in 32 squared. Don't put in the minus sign. Minus, well, 4 theta 12, 12 times 60, I might not bother to work out what that is, 12 times 60, all over 6. Now I'm going to get the calculator out and put that in. Two possible answers. Remember, quadratics have two answers, and there they are. One of those answers is completely impossible. Let's look back at the beginning of the problem. One value of x 8 point something or 2 point something is impossible. Why? What's the maximum value x can have? 6, because? Yeah. That's right. If I increase x, when it's 6, it meets in the middle. Let's look at this look. That's why it crosses there. Okay? At that point, we've lost the base altogether. We've just got a long wire, effectively, with no volume. So the volume's dropped to zero there. So the eight-point-something result is telling us this one. And we're not interested in the eight-point-something result. So we're only interested in the second one that we came up with, uh, which is there. So this is the one we want. So ignore this. This is the one that we want. And if you were doing this as a, you know, you would say why. This is where the engineering comes in. It's not just a math problem, it's also an engineering problem. And it's surprising how often quadratics come up. So in that case, generally only interested in one of the results. Quite often, one of the results becomes negative, and that, so that's obviously not the one we're interested in, especially if it's time. We're not interested in what's going on in negative times. But sometimes, both of them are, are relevant, so yeah. you have to be aware of what's going on in the real world, in other words. So x equals 2.43, whatever units we're talking about. Were there units given in the original problem? I don't remember. 
you know, so whatever units we're working in, okay? And then, of course, we could work out what the volume was. Now we could go back to the original function and plug in that value for x and calculate the volume. Would we like to do that as a final exercise? So it leads to a volume of 263. And if we go back to the function that we plotted, there it is, look. X, we found about 2.5, we said, 2.46. Volume, looks like it's around about 260, 270. We've got it as 263, so we now have an exact value. How do we do it? Using calculus.